Then I would say the next thing is new personal projects is what you need to think about. Fuck resolutions. Fuck resolutions. Resolutions are a weird ass tradition that we've kept going and kept doing New Year's resolutions, which I feel like they've already re- been rebranded in a million different ways. Like, you know, your New Year's goals and vision boards and various different things, because resolution has a real weird ass attachment to it. It's always usually about health and getting back into the gym, which is not ever a wrong thing. But I think that there needs to be a reality setting. And a, and, a, and, a, and a more nuance and more layers added into the idea of creating new things for yourself within the new year. Welcome, welcome. This is the Simply King Podcast. This is your boy Rodney Perry, King himself. And you just tuned into the Soulfully Conscious Podcast for humans, simply being humans. And we are at EOD. You know what EOD means. If you've been here in 2023 like the rest of us, or unless your last name is Star and you happen to be a starfish, then you don't know. EOD now means end of December. Not end of day. End of December. Correct your corporate jargon right now. Today's episode is going to be talking about, I guess, kind of just the end of year wrap up. You can call this a special delivery episode as well. Um, I'm chatting about, you know, what the six months and 30 is like. I'm going to chat about what I feel like, you know, what I've learned about myself in this year, what I plan for in the new year in terms of my own personal projects, because I think you all should have personal projects. So I'm going to tell you why I believe that. And then wrap it up and talk about the world, because what hell of a year have we had? Let's get into it. This is Simply King. So before I get going, I wanted to do a very official, unofficial, um, uh, I guess, you know, mid roll, if you will. Um, Mountain Valley water. This right here is some of the best water I've ever drank in my life. I currently fast on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And for me, it's the best thing I need to cleanse. It's the best thing I need to reset. It's the best thing I need to do all of that. This is me starting what I want to do in 2024 at the tail end of December. And that's me letting you know, Mountain Valley Water, I'm going to tag you in this. I'm going to tag your marketing specialist. I'm going to find whoever I need to find to let you know we need to work together. I've seen the branding. I've seen the marketing. And I think only thing is missing is me. Let's get into it because your water is great. And um, I highly suggest for everybody to get some because it tastes great. It's just, it's just good. It's good. It's just good. And also, better for all. You know, you know. Better for all. Get into it. We all need more com- compostable, recyclable cups. Get into it. You know, getting on my getting on my advertisement this year. You know, at the end of the year for next year. You know, a little practice, a little practice. But to keep it going, I do want to do one singular vibe minute segment um, for the end of the year, because it is a new segment that I'm introducing. Um, And I'll talk more about, you know, the why. But today's vibe minute is giving, giving, giving credence to one of my favorite songs of this year, according to my Apple Music replay. According to my Apple Music replay, a song by the title of For Granted featuring what you would call a collaborative supergroup, jazz supergroup called Dinner Party that includes Terrace Martin, Robert Glasper, Knife Wonder, and Kamasi Washington. And they have Aaron Ray on the vocals of this thing. It is the jam. Now anything else won't do. You remind me of something I never had. your playlist vibe out thank me later one of the best projects that came out this year um and certainly was one of those ones that that kind of caught me up in the rapture it was one that just just makes sense and I, all the words i just feel i just feel so good about um but let us get into the nitty-gritty of the thing because this won't be too long of an episode i just wanted to tap in with y'all 
because I, I feel like I, I would be remiss to not speak to how my year has been, why my year was presented to you all in the way that it was from a podcast perspective and just how I feel about life, you know? So I turned 30 this year um, on June 1st, actually. Um, yes, I'm a Gemini. Get it out, get it out, get it out. Get it out your system. Yes. Realize if you didn't already know, welcome to the Simply King podcast. You've always been here listening to me. Yes, I know. It is what it is. Um, but no, my first six months um, in 30 have been interesting. And I've kind of put them into three parts. First, it was a restructuring. I feel like I restructured so many elements of my life. I had to move at the time, you know, this time I had had moved, um, newly moved and only had been here a few months this time last year. Um, So I was still very much getting adjusted to a lot of things. I was in a really weird place. My money was the funniest it ever been in my life. And I felt like so many things that I expected um, weren't there. I wasn't being able to truly operate at my fullest capacity. I felt like I was failing in so many aspects of my life from in terms of romance, in terms of platonic relationships, in terms of You know, how I was showing up for myself as a whole, my body, my wellness, all those things. Um, So I feel like I had to restructure. You know, I I, I found found my place, moved in, started to really get adjusted, started to really, you know, get back into the swing of things, started to, you know, increase my bandwidth and take on more projects. Um, Started to realize that my, you know, something that I've always known, and that is my patterns and my habits and the systems that I've created and tested out for my life are truly beneficial to me. And they are the things that I need to stay, you know, to, to maintain, to prioritize. Like, yeah, it, it, no matter what the situation is, if I have guests over, if I, if I'm planning to do anything, I think I learned the value in having these like elements and these pillars in your life that are consistent. Um, and we need that structure. We need that infrastructure within our lives. And we need to treat ourselves a little bit more like a, not even like a business, but like an organization. You know, we need certain departments that that check on various things, a part of our lives. And it's a lot for us to manage. I think it's a lot for us to manage. And I get it. We already are managing and trying to, quote unquote, raise the, you know, traumatized inner child. But we also are managing a whole ass adult corporation called you. And I get it. Trust me, I get it. But the fact of the matter is, is you got to do it because nobody else can. (laughs) So I want to reassure you that it's possible, you're capable, and you're able to figure all these things out. But you're running your own race. Keep that in mind. You don't have to go as fast as somebody else or as slow as the next person. Find what your pace is and create the life that you want. It just it's just going to make sense in the end. Um, After restructuring, I feel like I had to release. And this is probably the one of the hardest things I ever had to, like, say over a mic um, because I I haven't discussed it um, on anything since it uh, occurred in my life. But I had to change a few relationships in my life, Um, major relationships in my life. I had some real genuine, what, you know, for lack of a better phrase, um, friendship breakups. Some of the first I've ever really had in my lifetime in a real genuine way. Not in a, we really only been cool for a small amount of time and we just kind of fell out or lost contact. Um, But I can say, I think at the start of fall, I thought that it was really two people in my life that I had to, you know, discuss um, where I was at, how I was feeling as a friend and myself, and also speak to why I believe there's there's a a need and a necessity in us to change the nature of our relationship. Um, Does that mean that, you know, everything is done forever? I don't know. But I think for right now, I know that for what I need for me and for what I need to do to expand, I think I need different, a different type of friend in my corner right now to be that close to me. 
Um, and I think that that was the hardest thing I ever had to do this year. One of the hardest things I had to do this year um, was genuinely realize that, oh, I might need to adjust and separate myself from people that I genuinely love, genuinely cared about for years, seen as family. Um, but I think that we all are doing things in our own ways. We all are growing at different paces. And I think for me, I'm at a place now where I feel like I've grown alone and I've grown to a certain point mentally that it's like, yeah, it's hard for me to make space for something that I feel like I know you're capable of. Um, and it, and it, it, to me, I feel like I'm going to ultimately end up being the bad, bad guy to forever not to not show up because I know that you're capable to not show up because you are, you know, self-sabotaging or whatever it might be. Um, or just genuinely just not being a, a good friend in general. Like, and I think that the back and forth, the stagnation, whatever it might be, the, you know, consistent issue that you're still kind of dealing with year after year, it gets hard to kind of support that. It gets hard to feel like you're not enabling something when you feel like you're growing in each year. You feel like you're growing incrementally. Um, you feel like you're getting better as a person. You feel like you're figuring it out. Um, you don't like it when people around you can't do the same thing, especially when you're willing to help, um, especially when you're, you have helped. Um, I think, I, I think that was one of the biggest things I had to do because I had to really reassess what it is that I've seen community really genuinely being, um, an enriching space for me in my life. So I had to really release, um, that was the biggest release I had to do. I had to also release some perceptions of myself. I had to let go of my, you know, lover boy, forever dating perception um, and understand that I need to really go back to the drawing board and understand what type of partner I want to show up as in a future romance. And what is what are my hangups? What, what is my leftover jadedness from previous relationships? What is it that stops me from, you know, diving in in a, in a deeper and vulnerable way when I make new connections? Um, what is it my problem? What are my problems in dating? What are my issues? What are my hangups? What are my red flags? What are my red flags? Not the ones that I'm thinking about for other people. What are mine? What am I bringing to the table that is truly maybe a pause moment for certain people? I had to think about a lot of those things this year and had to release this idea that I was any way, shape or form, just, you know, completely healed or, or, that, you know, that the work still needs to be done. Um, but also consider myself that, you know, I am able and capable. So I had to release a lot of things from my own self-perception to be able to continuously grow. Um, and just honestly, just think about myself and think about love differently. Think about my vulnerability differently. Think about what emotional safety looks like for me and how I should prioritize that and not put that into somebody else's hands um, how I should lead in that and not put that in anyone else's hands, um, to not expect for there to be a, a, um, a group thing. I think it should be, but to expect it, mm, you shouldn't, I think you should take care of you and make sure that you're not harming other people for sure. Um, and I think I had to learn that because I think I've, you know, I feel like I've done a lot this year. I feel like I've learned a lot of lessons. I think I've made some mistakes. Um, and I think those mistakes have taught me very specific lessons that I needed to really understand about what I need to feed in myself, what I need to never ignore with myself, that I'm, I'm, I'm truly a person that needs things. I'm not a person that is without, you know, needing things to, to live. You know, I need intimacy. I need, you know, com you know, community. I need friendship. I need to feel you know, like I belong. I need to feel desired. I need to feel, you know, admired. I need to feel like people want to be nice to me. I need to feel like me being able to be kind is truly just a per a personality trait more than it is me trying to get something from you and stand on it. Um, me being able to be vulnerable to you and with you is not some, you know, kind of, you know, I, I would say some type of What's the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not expectation, but like entitled 
entitled position to be in. Like, you gotta, I gotta be vulnerable with you. Oh, yeah, oh, I don't. I can pick and choose. I can be better about being vulnerable more often, but I also don't gotta do that with you just cause, you know? Um, who are you? And why, why should I do that with you is the question, you know? And so I had to release a lot of those things, release a lot of those thoughts, release a lot of those feelings about myself and my life in a lot of ways. Um, and lastly, the last thing that I think I learned was I, I had to really be better about reassurance. And that's all around reassurance for myself to continuously allow that to be the motivator for why I do what I do, um, to reassure myself that, hey, you, it could have been different. <laughs> it could have been different. You could still be in Jackson. You could still be in so many different spaces and places, but you've made a number of decisions to put yourself in the, in the scenario that you're in. Imagine if you continue to keep working hard. Imagine you keep to keep, you know, showing discipline and, 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 and keep working at yourself and doing the work where else you can be. You can probably get exactly what you want. You will get exactly what you want. Fuck a probably. You will. And I love that that's something that I had to come into and I'm still adjusting myself to is like, I need to continuously reassure myself that I'm good. Reassure myself that I'm going to figure it out, that I'm going to, that I have figured it out, that I am capable, that I am able, um, that I have all these things, you know, that I'm abundant, limitlessly. And it's just all on me on how I show it to the world. And I, and so many things wouldn't be issues unless I made them issues. So many things are, I am the root of those things. They don't start or go or speed up without me. And I'm the center of that. I'm the sun in my life. I'm the universe of my life. And I have to walk and talk like that a lot more and believe in that a lot more. But also let it be known that none of those things means that I'm a lone wolf means that I don't need nobody. None of those things mean any of those things. I want to connect with other universes. I want to connect with other people. I want to be in community with other people. I want to continuously build with other people. I want to create with other people. I want to trust other people with my things, where they see vision, where they see ways in which they, my things can improve, taking that criticism, taking that help, helping others giving them my time just because I can give them my time because I appreciate them for who they are. Reassurance. Then I would say the next thing is new personal projects is what you need to think about. Fuck resolutions. Fuck resolutions. Resolutions are a weird ass tradition that we've kept going and kept doing new year's resolutions which I feel like they've already re been rebranded in a million different ways. Like, you know, your new year's goals and vision boards and various different things. Cause resolution says a real weird ass attachment to it. It's always usually about health and getting back into the gym, which is not ever a wrong thing. But I think that there needs to be a reality setting and a, and a, and a, and a more nuanced and more layers added into the idea of creating new things for yourself within the new year. I.e., new projects, new personal projects. And your projects need to be, your projects need to be something that you genuinely, genuinely understand about your life and yourself. And this is where I yet again do another mid-roll situation. I want you all to be able to document your projects in the best way with supreme, supreme organization and something that you can get to on all of your devices. And you know how I do it? I use Notion. Notion not only is AI power to be able to help you when you're coming up with list ideas or organizing information, but they just have a quick and easy and truly user-friendly platform and interface that I think truly does the trick for no matter what it is that you do, if it's work, if it's personal, if it's for, you know, a you know, community project, no matter what it is, there's so many templates that are already available for you to utilize and also so many customizable features that can make whatever you need into whatever you need. So check it out. I actually am going to drop a promo code for you to go ahead and get signed up for Notion and tell them I sent you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Now, I do use Notion. 
But I, I feel like I want everyone to understand new personal projects for yourself are truly what you should adopt. Not resolutions, personal projects. The reason why I say and make that distinction is because I think we need to add more nuance. Saying that I want to get back into the gym again, we need to figure out why we keep saying why we have to get back into the gym. Why do we keep having to start over? What's the problem? What's going on? What's in the way? What's breaking the consistency? How are we in the first, you know, three, first two, two quarters of, you know, the year possibly inconsistent, not really getting back into the gym, having a period where by the end of March, we realize like, damn, we ain't been in a month. And then we start back again in April. And now we're talking, to work, talking about working on our summer bodies and da, 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 da. We keep making it into temporary things when we could make it for life. We could be setting ourselves up to be a healthy individual for life where we're not getting back into anything. So think about those things and approach it that way. Maybe you need to read something. Maybe you need to follow and take in some other type of media to support your mindset and shifting so that you can get in the gym, stay in the gym, get on a better diet, stay on that better diet, uh, be better about your wellness, be better about your health, read more, maybe join a big book club to find accountability partners in various different things. Find out what it is that you need to do to make your own personal project into something that makes sense for you and that truly benefits you as a whole. Um, something that's my own personal project is genuinely prioritizing my hobbies and outlets in the new year. I feel like I rarely have hobbies. I think for a long time, um, working in corporate America, you having any type of creative outlet outside of that pretty much takes up all of your time, um, or it can, um, if you allow it. And I think for me, I didn't realize that I was, you know, selling my overall, you know, quality of life short by just continuously just doing things work and then doing whatever it is I wanted to do. Now that my life has converged to a place where majority of the time I'm doing exactly what I want to do in terms of creating, um, now I have these gaps in this time there is like, I need to fill this. I need to do something. I need to adopt a hobby. And shout out to my friend Elena who gave me a great suggestion of a hobby of three types of hobbies that you should, you know, possibly have. And that's one where it's a productive hobby where you're learning something new that can probably be applied to life. Something mindless, you know, that really only impacts you, but it's mindless. You can, it can be whatever. Um, it doesn't really affect anything. It's not incremental growth. It's just a mindless activity that you find pleasure in. Um, and then the last one being moving your body in some way, shape or form. And that could be whatever it is, but it's a hobby that you move your body in some way, shape or form. I highly suggest everybody to do that. Um, but outlets as well. Like I want to speak more in public for fun and recreation, you know, recreationally, but also professionally, um, write more, um, just do more writing as, as a whole, um, for various different reasons, recite my writing, allow for it to just be known that this is what I'm thinking about. This is what I've thought about. I wrote this poem. I wrote this prose. I wrote this essay. I wrote this, uh, this just random ass, you know, sonnet. I'm gonna get into sonnet, right? I'm gonna get into just writing. I'm just getting into just various different outlets, uh, painting more, as an outlet as well. Um, it's something that I want to do in the new year. Um, just finding little crafty things to do around the house. You know what I'm saying? On a consistent basis, it's something I want to do in the new year. So just hobbies and, and outlets, hobbies and crafts, if you will. Um, next I would say is the Vibe Hour is my new baby. The Vibe Hour is my new baby. As you see with the Vibe Minute, the vibe minute that I did earlier today, uh, earlier in this episode, uh, that is this kind of tie-in promo for the Vibe Hour. The Vibe Hour is a twice weekly, um, you know, internet radio program over there on Station Head. You can download the app uh, on Station Head as well as there's a desktop version as well where you can listen to me on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You can actually listen to me tonight. Um, this is December the 28th, the last show of the year. I'm doing my end of the year wrap up episode where I'm gonna give you some of the best songs that came out this year. A lot of them will probably feature on a playlist throughout, you know, the Vibe Hours existence, which is only really was, un, was really the end of September. But nevertheless, I'm going to still cover so many uh, songs and talk about so many new songs that came out this year and things that I think are just impactful in the year as a whole. 
um, chat about that, chat about what I think is to come in music. And yeah, wrap up the year right with just a good feeling and a good vibe on exactly what it is that we need to be talking about, you know? But the Vibe Hour, I have so many plans for the Vibe Hour. Uh, I appreciate and shout out to Jay Zine Azari for, you know, connecting me with Jalen Josie and her team uh, for getting me that interview. I love that, you know, as soon as I kind of came up with this idea that it's immediately understood, immediately received and accepted by those that have, you know, tapped in and jumped in and, you know, in the words of Jay Zine, gotten lost in the vibe hour, if you will. You know what I'm saying? And it's a great show. It, 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 it's a full on concept where I'm walking you through the music. I'm talking you through the music, if you will. You know, I'm talking you through it. And basically, yeah, I, you know, choose about 20 to 25 songs on a various different themes. Um, you know, I've done things around, I've created what I feel like is my own genre being New Age Quiet Storm. And I've done about two different, you know, volumes of those. I do new and indie music every month as well as I do a dedicated playlist to the Zodiac sign of that season as well. Uh, on top of all the other various playlists that I'll do, from all blues to 90s vibes to jazzy vibes to, you know, whatever it might be, um, I have so many different playlist ideas, uh, you know, on the docket for next year. Y'all gonna love it. Y'all gonna love it. And I plan on continuously doing interviews just like I did with Jalen Josie. Uh, I want to do ones that are even more in-depth. I want to have ones where they are also on the show as well and kind of, you know, walking and talking through the music. You can check out actually the first uh, first version of that with Coco um, on my uh, We Cry Together episode edition of The Vibe Hour. Um, it was great. You can listen to all of my various uh, past editions of The Vibe Hour on Station Head right now. Um, go check them out. And also, the playlist for Vibe Hour are available on Apple Music. Just find me, Rodney Perry, a.k.a. King, on that and Spotify. You should be able to find all the various playlists, and they're updated on a consistent basis uh, for every sh new show that comes out. So just go ahead and follow me, and then you'll always get the new playlist that comes out from each, uh, each week's show. Appreciate you. And then um, a new... Another, my last kind of, you know, personal project, I guess, for next year is really holistic growth. Holistic growth, you know? Um, and I, I feel like when I say holistic growth, I'm thinking about my health. I'm thinking about wellness. I'm thinking about my mind. I'm thinking about my mental health as a whole. I'm thinking about me satisfying the things that I think I don't satisfy enough. Uh, me making more time for personal intimacy, healthy personal intimacy, um, me making time for communal intimacy and, and camaraderie, um, me opening myself up to new acquaintances, new connections, uh, me getting out of my own way and thinking about a particular fear or a particular, a particular rigidity that um, I kind of want to get past. It's like there's a, such a thing as, you know, things that are a part of who you are and there's things that you try to avoid uh, in changing. And I think I'm a big person who's always been about, you know, growth and transition. And I think that the space that I'm in now is that, and I said this uh, this past holiday weekend to my best friend Lou, is I feel like I'm at a, at a true grounded point, a stable point to be able to truly jump to a new level um, where I'm not thinking about moving anytime soon. I'm not thinking about moving from the place I'm at. I'm not thinking about moving from the neighborhood I'm in. I'm not thinking about moving to a whole new state or transitioning to a whole new job or or looking for a whole new job, uh, doing anything else with my time other than just continuously expanding. Like I feel like I'm in a really, really good spot and a really good place to start the new year. And um, that feels good. That feels great. And so I feel like I can really, if anything, you know, for all the folks who love to, you know, grow plants, I, I feel like I've been propagating all year. And I finally have, you know, sprouted those roots and ready to be in the ground and um, and really be grounded and rooted and and, and and nurtured to continuously grow tall and towards the sun. You know, it's kind of how I feel about life right now. And so I want holistic growth is my new personal project. Uh, and I want to find those measurable points uh, by using things like Notion. Code in my description. <laughs> um, 
And I just feel like that's really what I, where I'm at with it. It's like I really genuinely want to be better about how I feel, how I feel about myself. I want to love myself better. It's something that I say as a, as a mantra on a consistent basis. I want to love myself better today and tomorrow. Um, I want to be a better lover to myself today and tomorrow. Um, it's something that I have to continuously remind myself of, but I, I feel like growth is the easiest when you're stable. When you're not moving around, when you're not rocky, uh, when you're not forever in this transitional period. And I think I've always opted into transition, opted into major change. And now those major changes have had a certain impact on me that I have to admit and grow into. Um, but more than anything, I have to love myself better, uh, genuinely. As a, as, as a human being, I have to love myself better. Um, and let's close out on the world because I've talked way longer than I even expected to. Um, this year we witnessed two wars get started. Aliens are amongst us. AI has been pushed to a whole new motherfucking level. So much has happened this year that it's damn near hard to even put it all into one sentence. But I think that if we've learned anything in this year, we've learned that them damn loans are never going to be paid. Joe Biden possibly will lose the election. Um, people are going to forever continuously argue about the things that we've told them each year they shouldn't argue about. So $200 dates, we're going to see you in 2024 more than likely. 50-50, we're going to see you in 2024 more than likely. All these things are going to be there. So, if they're going to be there, ask yourself, will you care? Will you respond? Will you get into it? Will you allow for yourself to be riled up by the continuous and arduous just debate online that does not do anything or go anywhere, ever? Will you do it? I think some of you will. And it's okay. Because I think it's how it's been. It's okay. But I can. I think you can do better. I think you can truly do better. But I, 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 I feel like, you know, it's been hell of a year. I know it's been different for everybody. I think we all are genuinely still not speaking to the adjustments that we are adjusting to via the pandemic. People are still working from home and continue to want to work from home and prefer to work from home and have expanded and, and, and adjusted their whole lives from a work from home setup. Um, so companies, CEOs, various different people, I think people should let that shit go. I, I think that folks are nosy as hell, want to see if people who have other jobs, they do. If you, if that's a problem, you pay people more. That's how that works. Um, free Palestine. Um, why are you sending, why are we continuously sending Ukraine money? What else do I need to say about this year? Um, R. Kelly's still in jail. Diddy is a creep. A massive creep. Massive, massive monster. Um, and it's finally being revealed. Is this the reckoning of hip-hop? 50 years in hip-hop? Who knows? Uh, yeah, a lot of things happen. But honestly, I'm over it. It's the end of December, and we made it. I want you all to feel good and feel better about the lives that you've lived in this year, to consider that everything was on purpose, uh, consider that everything will make you better, regardless if it was a felt like a setback or felt like a, a step ahead. Either way, you're going to be better for it. Trust me. You're good. You're in good hands. Uh, I love that, you know, we all get another chance to be better and do better. Um, I'll wrap up and close on this particular announcement of going on hiatus Gonna, you know, go ahead and batch up a few episodes. I have a few people on the docket that I think are gonna be great new additions to as, on the guest list for next year. Uh, but expect to see me in the first week, first Monday of February, uh, which I'll be posting different things and different things about it. But in the meantime, make sure that you keep following me everywhere. If you don't know, you should know. You can follow me everywhere at Kings underscore memoirs. You can tap in with me. My DMs are open. My email is open. Um, make sure that you follow the, the Simply King pod 
um, on IG and follow, go and like the Facebook page as well and continuously interact. And, you know, if you have any particular suggestions or guest suggestions, anything like that, make sure you can just go ahead and DM me those things as well. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. If you don't and you've been listening to this for however long you've been listening to this, make sure you leave a review. Make sure you are subscribing. You don't got to just follow. You don't want to miss nothing. Make sure you get to it. Uh, I appreciate y'all so much. It's been a hell of a year. I really feel like next year is going to be one of my best years. I'm claiming and naming and claiming. I don't know if I ever really named and claimed that before. It might be prophetic a little bit that I've never really done that. Or maybe I just can't remember. Nevertheless, um, I'm claiming that next year is going to be a really great year in podcasting. I feel real comfortable, real good, real stable, and real able to you know improve the quality of everything about the pod, the sound, the the, the visual, the the environment, the guest, uh, the you know level of conversation, all those various things. I feel real good about. So I look forward to seeing you all in the new year. For y'all seeing me in the new year. And I hope that y'all are good to yourselves as we get to the close, the true close of this year. Everything happens for a reason. Trust me, you're blessed and protected. That's all I got to say. This has been the Soulfully Conscious Podcast for humans, simply being humans. I've been Rodney Perry, also known as King. And this has been the end of December episode. (laughs) And this is Simply King. Peace.